Okay, here's another video on the CARE Act or the CARES Act uh, for coronavirus stimulus. And this is Division B, Title I, rebates and other individual provisions. Uh, so this is the stimulus checks, basically. And what this is talking about is the qualifications uh, to receive the, these checks um, and how much they're going to be. So first and foremost, not everybody's going to get $1,200. You need to understand that up front because uh, they're going to look at your 2018 or 2019 tax return. So if you haven't filed 19, uh, there's no no hurry. Uh, they'll they'll look at your 18 and consider that for qualification. Okay, so uh, no, so just don't panic. <laughs> uh, so the way they're doing this though is as an advanced tax credit, uh, non-refundable tax credit, which is kind of strange. And uh, like I said, not everybody's going to get $1,200 because. The way they're doing this is they are uh, granting a credit against a tax imposed by subtitle A for the first taxable year beginning in 2020, an amount equal to the lesser of net income tax liability or $1,200, 2400 in the case of joint return. So let's say you're a married family of four and you make $50,000. Okay, so uh, what they're going to do is they're going to take your $50,000 income they're going to subtract your standard deduction, uh, which for married couples is 24-4. That's going to leave you with uh, taxable income of $26,000. Now, normally your tax on $26,000 as married couple is going to be something like uh, it's going to be something like $2,800. Um, and then they're going to compare that $2,800 against $2,400 and take whichever is less. So in this case, $2,400 is less. Okay, so. Uh, that is going to be the maximum that you can receive, but then they're going to add on top of that $500 per qualifying child. So if you have two, two small kids, uh, then instead of 2400 you would get 3400 However, if you make too much money, uh, if you make over 75000 as an individual or 150000 as a married filing joint, which is this limitation down here, and that's, that's not including the standard deduction because it's based on AGI, uh, or just a gross income, then they're going to start reducing that benefit. And uh, they won't reduce it to negative, but they will reduce it down to zero. So if you make too little, you don't have enough taxable income, then you're going to get 600 bucks uh, or 1200 for a married couple. Uh, if you make too much, then they're going to reduce that down that 1200 based on the per on a percentage of the, um, of the uh, amount you make over that threshold amount. So, <laughs> your sweet spot, I guess, is, well, it's, A, it's going to depend on uh, if you're married or single, uh, but it's going to be somewhere in the, like, thirty to $70,000 range. So, uh, you know, if if you're savvy on taxes, basically, you know, once you're above the earned income credit thresholds and then below that seventy five or one fifty, that's going to be your sweet spot. Uh, they are going to look at 2018 and 2019, so if you haven't filed 19, like I said, don't panic. You don't have to rush out and file today, because they will look at 2018. Uh, you do have to have some kind of income, though. Uh, so if you are, if you have nothing, like you don't have Social Security, or uh, and uh, you don't have wages, and um, you know you don't have any pensions or anything, you don't file. You don't, I mean, you don't have any income. You don't need to file. Then uh, you don't need to. I mean, you're not. Basically, you're invisible for for this stimulus check so um <laughs> so there's that uh, and the the thing the thing that the reason that they're or sorry the one of the effects of that they're doing this is that if you have other credits like children like you put solar panels on your house or like uh you bought um, an electric vehicle that has the alternative fuel credit or um uh you know, a couple other things, but, uh, you know, those, those non-refundable credits all go in the same section. So, you know, they all go against your initial tax liability. And if you're getting this credit, that's going to reduce the amount of benefit you're getting from those other credits. So that's something to keep in mind. It will affect, or, or sorry, it may affect your 2020 tax return. So just be aware of that. And, uh, again, look at basic standard deduction, coordination with advanced refunds of credit. Uh, bah, bah, bah. yeah, so, you know, they were treating, uh, in, 
you know, they're treating any errors in the math that, that they do as as a mathematical error instead of an intentional error, and that's that's just some language to avoid. Uh, so, like, if you're intentionally fraudulent on a tax return and and the IRS finds that to be the case, then you can be assessed. Uh, there's all kinds of penalties actually. There's like a twenty percent inaccuracy penalty, and there's a there's a five thousand uh, dollar frivolous return penalty. So the language in here is so that um, uh, you know, that's not going to apply. And, you know, it's it's a little strange here. So, you know, advance refund amount. For purposes of paragraph one, the advance refund amount is the amount that would have been allowed as a credit under the section for the first, for, for such first taxable year, if this section other than subsection F and this subsection had applied to such taxable year. Timing of payments, secretary shall, Subject to the provisions of this title, refund or credit any overpayment attributable to this section as rapidly as possible. No refund or credit shall be made or allowed under this subsection after December 31st, 2020. No interest. No interest shall be allowed on any overpayment attributable to this section. Uh, alternate, alternate taxable year. This is what I saw about 2018. In the case of an individual who, at the time of any determination made pursuant to paragraph 3, has not filed a tax return for the year described in paragraph one, the secretary may apply such paragraph for, by substituting 2019 for 2018. So, uh, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, you have to have a valid social security number or, uh, or individual ident or identification number. Uh, you have to be a non-resident alien. Uh, so another interesting part is that uh, valid identification number means a social security number as such term is defined in section 24H7. So I'd have to look that up, but uh, I think that is going to exclude ITIN holders. So if you have an individual taxpayer identification number, you might be excluded from this. Uh, so, you know, your your immigrants and things are might be a bit upset with that. Uh, definition of deficiency. Oh, here's the math or clerical error authority. Uh, this is if you're in Puerto Rico. Americans, uh, exception, computing, offset. Yeah, that's all. That's the appropriations of where they're going to get the money from. So yeah, so that's the section. Um, the takeaways are that not everybody's going to get twelve hundred bucks. Uh, you don't have to rush out and file twenty nineteen, and. It may affect your 2020 tax returns. Hope that helps.